Welcome to part 5 of our videos on the history of North Africa and the Mediterranean. I decided to create a playlist. So we do have a playlist now with these videos in. And we're focusing in this video on this region of the Atlas mountain range. And that's the picture that we're um, starting with. So we said we're going to look at the Medes in this video. So we're using the source Salust, the Jugothian War speaking about Hercules in North Africa with an army and this army um, consisting of Medes, Persian and Armenians and in this video we just focusing here on the Medes okay so the part we want to focus on is when it says that the the name of the Medes the Libyans gradually corrupted changing it in their barbarous tongue into Moors. So according to this um, scholar, the Medes were, um, yeah, the name became corrupted into Moors. So, which is interesting when we looked at the this 1554 map of Africa, that we have the a tribe here called the Maori. So I was wondering, is that the, the word that's been corrupted into Moors, that the that Seleust was speaking of. So this, uh, let's just learn a little bit about this region. So that the tribe of the Maori, and this is where this word um, Mauritania is coming from. So we have Mauritania, it's the Latin name for a region in the ancient Maghreb. It stretched from central present-day Algeria westwards to the Atlantic, covering northern present-day Morocco and southward to the Atlas Mountains. So that's why we started with this picture of the um, of the Atlas mountain range so this is the region that we we're speaking of but just for our learning we mustn't confuse this with the with the modern day country see we've got Mauritania here in Western Africa so we're not speaking about this country so we're looking here to you know to the north and we'll just do some beginner mythology as well we um, so we do have this Atlas mountain range and it's named after a character in the mythology um, Atlas. So yeah, punished supposedly to hold up the you know the world on his shoulders. And it's interesting that there was Atlas King of Atlantis. So this mythological advanced civilization, and we also have Atlas King of Mauritania king of the Maori and we you know we already mentioned the Maori so yeah it's interesting that um, if we think about that previous video that we did so please watch the previous video so this makes sense remember how we were saying that there was you know nothing added in this part on that video you know, even for like over a thousand years once Egypt was already established but when you look at the mythology then you start to see that there, you know, there could be something happening here, but then you, um, yeah, you have to consider the history of the of the mythology. So what I'd like to look at now is, we're just going to mention the Moors in this video, but we're not going to study the Moors. So we see that it said that the Medes, um, the Libyans, changing the name, corrupting it into the Moors. So we'll just read a little bit, but we're not going to study it. So it says that the term Moor is an exonym first used by Christian Europeans to do, designate the Muslim populations of the Maghreb and other regions as well. And it says that Moors are not a single distinct or self-defined people. So maybe that could be important to consider, you know, that it, it says that it has no real ethnological value. So maybe a term that's been used in, you know, in a broad way, and maybe that could also maybe lead to, you know, maybe some confusion as well. But we're not actually going to um, study the Moors in this video because I want to speak about the Medes specifically and I'd like to I'd like to upload a video that I did a while ago which was just trying to build a bit of a foundation on the Medes so it is an older video but I still think it's you know valuable and I'm I'm going to um, just get it ready. So let's get that video ready. So give me just a second to um, bring this video in. 
and then I might pause it at some points to just speak about what I've um, brought up. And this is also going to be in relation to something that we um, said we spoke about in the previous video. Okay, so let's just start this off. So we're looking at Madai, son of Japheth, son of Noah. Now Josephus tells us that the Greeks called the descendants of Madai the Medes. This is a similar uh, story to what happened with the Thracians. Just remember how the Greeks called the, the descendants of Tyrus Thracians after a character in Greek mythology. And we have a similar story here because we have this character called Medea in Greek mythology. And Herodotus tells us that she ended up leaving Athens and settled in the Iranian plateau among the Aryans, who subsequently changed their name to the Medes. So the Medes would have uh, called themselves the Aryans. But then because of the story with Medea, they changed their name to the Medes. So we have the connection with the Medes to being um, Aryans. Now, I don't want to speak too much about this because if you can see my screen and you can read the words, it's not too small. Uh, you can see these controversial uh, controversial topics in you know, this dark, the dark part of history. And we don't, I don't really want to go too deeply in, in this video. But we just want to try to get an idea about this word um, Arya. So it's to do with the language Vedic Sanskrit. Um, also got a connection to being connection with noble. Maybe referred to themselves as the noble ones. I can see a connection with being free, uh, not being a slave. If we look at all these um, options, the different languages, devoted, faithful, chief, noble. I think important one here is that it says you know to be an Aryan is to be faithful to the Vedic religion. So you practice the religion and the rituals, but also connected to the language, you know, Vedic Sanskrit. Just to give an idea, you know, what do we when we say Arya or uh, Iran or the Aryans, you know, what, what we're talking about is this concept of being free, noble, uh, devoted, but it's also connected to religion and language. Okay, so I've got to bring the sound back in for this video. So that was um, just a bit of an introduction to the Medes. So if you remember in our previous video, I said we we're going to come back to something. We spoke about the the Amazai, so the Berbers, how the Berbers refer to themselves as the Amazai, and it is um, disputed, but it could mean you know free man or noble. So we said you know. Do the Berbers refer to themselves as the noble ones? So just interesting how that could work together. If we just go through some of those details again. So we have this source speaking about Hercules in Africa with an army. And part of this army were Medes. But this army was you know, left behind. And then in that video, it spoke about the, the character in the mythology called Medea. How she came to live amongst the, the Medes. But they originally called themselves the Ari. And then some of those words were, you know, free, but also noble. So it's just very interesting how the, um, the you know, the Medes would have referred to themselves as the, as the Arya. And now we're looking in this region because of the source. And then the Berbers who are in this region, you know, they may also refer to themselves as the, as the noble ones. So... I just thought that was a you know an interesting detail that could link together potentially with this connection with the Medes but then also with the with the Berbers. So what I would like to do now is actually to play the rest of this um, video to continue building this foundation for the Medes. But it is an older video, so if you have watched it before and you remember it, you know you don't have to watch it again. I might say something at the end of the video, but it that's probably not going to be um, it might just be like more of a, you know, like an ending for the video. So that's all I wanted to do for this video. I'm now going to get this ready to continue with that um, with that foundation for the Medes.
bit of a foundation on the Medes in terms of uh, genealogy. And we're going to go to first look at the Book of Jubilees because it gives us this fascinating detail. Uh, let me read this to you. It says, And Japheth and his sons went towards the sea and dwelt in the land of their portion. And Medai saw the land of the sea, and it did not please him. And he begged a portion from Elam and Ashur and Arphaxad, his wife's brother. This is a very important detail because it's saying that Madai, the son of Japheth, married into the line of Shem, married a daughter of Shem. And now he's asking for land from Arphaxad, Ashur, and Elam because he doesn't like the land by the sea or the land that he, you know, he, was, he was allotted to him. So it's a very, very fascinating detail that the Book of Jubilee, Jubilee, uh, Jubilees gives us. That if we're trying to locate Madai and where his descendants went, we should be looking in the land of Shem. Very interesting. And it says that he dwelt in the land of Media near to his wife's brother until this day. So maybe there was kind of like multiple reasons. So he obviously wasn't maybe happy with the land, but his wife is from, from the line of Shem. And maybe she wanted to live with her with her family. And Madai preferred to live in the land of Shem. So what we should be thinking about now is with uh, Shem, that there's a connect there's a connection with the Medes, you know, with some of these lines, with some of these sons. And that's what we're gonna see now. Let's carry on investigating because further on in Jubilees, we're told that Arfaxad took himself a wife and her name was Rasu Asia the daughter of Susan. So there's that Susan and the Susa and the Susiana we've been speaking about, the daughter of Elam. So Arphaxad marries into Elam. Well, there's intermarriage between these two, Arphaxad and Elam. Okay. And the son that they have, that Jubilees tells us, is um, Canaan. Okay, so Arphaxad and Rasu Asia have Canaan. But if you see here in Genesis, it doesn't actually give us that son, Canaan, it goes straight from Arphaxad to Sela. So that's uh, a bit of a discrepancy, it looks like. But if we go to the Gospel of Luke, he actually gives Canaan as the son of Arphaxad. So what source was Luke using? Because he's actually saying that Arphaxad had a son called Canaan. And then it would be Canaan that would have Sela. So Jubilees. And the Gospel of Luke is saying that there should be a descendant here named Canaan. And we're going to try to see if we can find evidence to kind of support that, that it should be there because if we look at Jubilees, it goes on to give us something very interesting. It says that this um, Canaan, he took himself a wife whose name was Malka, the daughter of Madai. See, now we've got a descendant of Arphaxad marrying into, intermarrying with Madai, the Medes. This is very, very interesting because now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this Melka to see if we can find evidence for this connection with the Medes and our Faxad further down. And we do find it because okay, now we're in Genesis 11 and we're talking about, Ab it says Abraham, and remember that's Abraham. His name was changed, so we're talking about Abraham. It says, And Abraham and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Okay, so we got a Milka here in the time of Abraham and Nahor. Okay, so this is the Nahor we're speaking of. So he takes a wife called Milka, but we know back here there was um, this Milka, daughter of Madai. So I think Milka and Milka are the same name. I think it's connected. But we can see that what's going to be happening is that this name. Um, Melka has stayed within this family is like an important name even to this point here when Nahor marries a Milka and I think this name is connected to like being like a queen so maybe it's like a royal line or an important noble line but I think that kind of supports the idea that this is what the Jubilees is saying about this um, Canaan it might be showing that that's true that he married a daughter of Madai called Melka because we're still seeing this name still seeing this name later on in the genealogy so what we're starting to see we must now start thinking about is Medes in the lines of Arphaxad okay being connected in this line
but also maybe you're connecting with Ashur or Elam and because I want to show you this Bible verse from Isaiah I think it's here this is Isaiah 21 2 it says a dire vision has been shown to me the traitor betrays the looter takes loot Elam attack media lay siege I will bring to an end all the groaning she caused. Just to show you this verse, and I think this is prophesizing the destruction of Babylon, but this connection between Media and Elam, so to show that the Medes are connected to Elam. So that's what I'm trying to say is that we must think about um, Medes being maybe intermarrying with Elam, but there's also maybe Medes intermarrying with um, in this line of our facts that. So let's stay with this line of our facts side and see what else we can discover because Abraham, when his first wife dies, um, Sarai or Sarah, he marries another wife called Keturah and they have six sons, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak and Shua. Now it's these two sons here called Medan and Midian so it looks like they are carrying that name Madai. So this could be more evidence of this 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 intermarrying and the way the, the names are carried forward. And Madan and Midian could be connected to the um, the Medes, to the Madai, son of Japheth. Because I think Madai and the Medes and the Median Empire, this word is connected to like middle or medium. So it might be mean like the middle land. If you think about some of our words, like in the median, and being connected with middle. So I think that's what we're seeing here, is that um, these two sons of Abraham, maybe, here they are here, you can see them from Abraham, might be being named after Madai, because of this female, um, we got Milka as well in this line, maybe some of these sons are also being named after Madai. Okay, so that was the just a bit of foundation for Madai, son of Japheth. You'll notice that I edited it, I edited that video quite a bit there, because the direction that that video was going is going to take us away from North Africa. But I will try also at some point, you know, get try get all the information back on the channel. If you remember, I did say I want to try get um, information that um, isn't on the channel anymore back on because of all the changes that I was making. So that's going to be it for this video. We, um, we're starting to learn a bit more about this region, but you know, if maybe you've noticed what we're trying to do is introduce as many um, elements as we can find first of all to understand this region. So, so far we have spoken about the Biblical Philistines, we've spoken about the Persians, we've now also spoken about the Medes, we also spoke about the Mycenaean Greeks. So we're just looking at all these different elements. And then you know, once we've just um, explored as much as we can, we'll then try and see if we can you know, put this picture together. Is there something that we can actually start putting together that you know, makes sense for this region? Uh, also, sorry, I forgot we mentioned the Trojans and the Sea Peoples coming towards the Mediterranean. So in the next video, we're going to speak about the Canaanites. Because it's interesting, the Philistines, sorry, not the Philistines, the um, the Berbers, they according to their own traditions, they um, they do connect themselves with the Philistines, with Goliath, the giant, but they also connect themselves with the Canaanites. So that should also be an interesting video. So um, hopefully we'll see you in that one. Thank you for watching this video, and take care.